welcome. Leave it low. Okay, just making sure. Um, welcome to the stream. Welcome to my panel. Um, I'm going to maybe I need to add a scene really quick. Ooh. Oh, how do I do it? Well, kind of done goofed because I want to have a. I guess I could just make this a little tiny bit bigger and not right there. Me up in this corner. I'm trying to find a good spot where I can hide my face. Hello. Okay, good, good, good tips. Um, I have a problem with, I love to enunciate and emote a lot through my voice. So I'm, it's probably gonna be a problem. So I apologize for those of you who are using the closed captioning. I'm gonna try and speak slowly and clearly. But again, I am gonna be using some Japanese words. So that might be a problem. All right, um, because we're starting a little bit early and again, I hope you had a great time at Sea of Serenity. I am the last panel. Thank you so much for joining us. I can't believe you guys stayed up this late. You're amazing humans. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you don't mind staying up this late. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing some, some knowledge of my other hobby, which is kimono. Um, let me just talk a little bit. Uh, I wanted to talk about some magazines because I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to talk about, um, which doesn't have anything to do with seasonality whatsoever, but um, I just want to share some magazines on styling because I know there's a lot of questions like where do I find modern um, like kimono inspiration. Um, this is kind of some of the stuff I look at. And hopefully these are big enough for you guys to see. Um, these two publications are Kimono Hime, which is a book, Japanese magazine. Um, ironically, these are both special edition issues. This one is specifically on Furisore, which is a formal type of wear. And this one's on Yukata. And I think the Yukata I'm wearing today is actually featured in this issue. Um, somewhere in the back, I think. I was like, hey, yeah. Um, there it is, Mighty Brando of Yukata. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if the closed captioning is going to love all of my odd words, so anyways. Um, and then these two um, I picked up in Japan recently. They're both from 2019. 18, 19? This one's 19. This one's probably 2019 as well. Um, if you ever are in Japan, they have a lot of um, kimono photo studios um, where you can rent a whole outfit. Um, it's a huge popular thing to do, even with Japanese people, um, especially for special occasions or just for fun, because kimono can be very expensive. Most people don't like to own theirs in Japan, even. Um, so they have these cute little catalogs that you can pick up at photo studios of like styling suggestions of like oh I want to look like this chick on the cover and this is these both are um Hakama and like a free soda which is typical for like uh, graduation day it's a very very common thing for people to wear um based on like Taisho schoolgirl uniforms actually but anyway so these all have like just kind of fun styling guides and I love to pick these up, they're free. Um, if you happen to like walk by one of the photo studios, I'm always like trying to keep my eye out. Yes, Taisho Roma forever, right? So this is like a huge aesthetic that I love. So this is a really fun, fun way to like get kind of like modern trends in kimono is just to sneak over <laughs> to the rental studios and pick up just some really cute, um, catalogs that they, they share. But yeah, just some like cute ideas on how to style yourself. So anyways, that's just a cute um, idea. If you're looking for inspiration, Kimono Hime is a really cool magazine. It's very, very modern styling. Um, I this, The look I did for the fashion walk um, was specifically more Kimono Hime style. Um, you tend to blend Western elements 
Like she's got like a pillbox hat. Um, but it's still very like recognizably kimono. So very like Western prints, um, very wild, bright colors. And the styling is very modern. And there's a lot of like pop if you're kind of more into decor vibes. Um, super recommend checking out maybe an issue or two of Kimono Hime magazine. Um, you can get it from Kinokunya. There are a bunch of people who have them like on um, like in lots on eBay. Um, I highly recommend grabbing yourself an issue or two if you're looking for like kind of how to style more in a modern way. There's also a bunch of like magazines that are way more about traditional kimono that I don't have. That's not my personal style. Um, but there is a bunch of just like really traditional magazines that focus on traditional methods of like printing on the fabrics. They kind of review um, in depth each one of like the companies that they're covering in their latest releases and uh, how to order from them. So that's also really interesting too, but that's much more um, traditional style, which is not typically what I personally wear. Anyways, I'm sure we are well into the time. It, I, like I say, Oh, we're like a minute away from the time. I had to check my phone. So we're about one minute from actually the start time. So I think I can get started on the topic of kimono seasonality. I'm gonna like put these somewhere that they're not on top of my, my stuff. So I hope you like the kimono backdrop. These are actually all kimono behind me. Um, this is actually a, a a true Taisho piece. This isn't a vintage piece. So these are all kind of, they don't really have seasons, so that's why I stuck them up there. You're ready? <laughs> You're ready, Hefe? Um, but yeah, we're ready to talk about this stuff. So let's go to slide two. Let's talk about traditional Japanese seasons. Um, so a really fun thing to do when you're wearing kimono, if this is like a hobby you want to get into, is to know a little bit about the concept of seasonality. Um, and that is kind of dressing to fit the season. Um, and that's considered kind of like a stylish thing to do. Not necessary. There's tons of prints and motifs that have nothing to do with the season. Some of them might just be like lucky or whatever. This one in particular, I'm wearing crows today. Um, that is not a seasonal motif. It is, uh, it is a lucky one though. And I, another time I will talk more about kind of the deeper meaning of some, uh, some specific uh, motifs. Uh, but traditionally, we're mostly gonna focus on like the traditional ideas. <laughs> a cow print, moo? Yes, no, these are, these are crows. Let me get a little closer, my crows. Um, so Japan kind of has this like really obsession with like seasonal everything, like including it affects things like the food they eat, like they really love the idea of like things that are like right in the moment. Um, that's a really big thing in Japan. You'll see foods that come up that are like, ah, oh, yes, this re refreshing feeling of summer or fall or things like that. That's a very typical thing you'll see in foods, um, in events, in festivals, all that kind of stuff. Um, and part of it is based on this crazy calendar. Um, I borrowed this from a really wonderful YouTuber named um, Billy Natsunaga. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get rid of my overlay because I think it is blocking <laughs> some of the thing. Give me one second. Yeet. I yeeted myself. There we go. I'll put myself higher up in the corner. There we go. Um, so when you want to think about seasonality, you want to think about um, any sort of like festivals or holidays, um, natural occurrences, things like um, like the weather that's typical. And this, again, this is all focused like mostly on Japan itself. I don't know why this thinks I'm over here weird. I don't know what's going on with why this is playing this way. Please stop. Okay. Um, you guys, you're going to make me blush. You need to stop. Uh, so a lot of these ideas are based on like traditional Japanese weather um, and climate, which, you know, climate change, a lot of the stuff doesn't exactly work anymore. And 
you are welcome to adjust the idea of seasonality to where you live. If you happen to live in the Southern Hemisphere, for example, this stuff's not going to work for you either. So, um, but yeah, just think about kind of like natural things around you and you want to choose your clothing to reflect that. And that's kind of a fun concept. Um, and another thing that seasonality, oh, back, back, I was kidding. Uh, seasonality effects is um, the actual types of kimono you're wearing. So that's um, awase, hitoi, and usumono. Um, if you are doing things that are super traditional, like tea ceremony, you might be very strict about what day of the month you decide to choose, like the turning over of seasons. It's kind of almost like a, mm, like a very traditional and ceremonial thing to do. Is like ah, now is the time where I put away my winter clothes and it's you know kind of a, a more traditional thing to do not the everyday person does not live like that <laughs> and even the people who just wear kimono for fun they don't live like that but this is a kind of guideline to think about and so i'm going to show you a couple of kimono that i have that are stamp examples of alase hitoe and usumono so give me one second <laughs> So I'm starting out with a haori, which is a jacket. I'm sure many of you people know. And I love, I love watching the closed caption struggle. Um, this one is again, this is called awase, which is a lined garment. I picked this one because the lining is very obvious, at least in the top half of the garment. Um, a lot of, um, especially men's haori, have really, really exciting prints on the inside, even though the outside is a little bit more subdued. So that's kind of like a little fun treat just for yourself. But I thought it was a really good example and really easy to see. This is a fully lined garment. Um, the bottom half is the outside fabric folded under, so it is fully lined. Um, so that's considered an awase um, kimono piece. And um, the idea uh, of awase, hitoi, and usumono kind of go through like all your pieces. It's not just your kimono itself. It would also be your outerwear, your obi. All of those those things can have like all of those things can have this same like it's multi layered. I have examples of some of that stuff too. So that's that guy. Back here. And then this is a silk hitoi, which is a unlined kimono. Sorry, I'm trying to like get to the place where I can show you the inside. So many layers. So as you can see, inside and outside, same fabric. It's not any different. And I like how I'm just playing this thing and I didn't ask you to. Stop it. Um that that is true, but also I for whatever reason it's like very similar to like men's fashion in America and like the West. Men's fashion is very, very dull on the exterior in general, and like I like how they have that like flash and pop on the inside, and it's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of trending away from that, but it's very much like traditional like suit coats and stuff with like fancy lining. And then usumono, um, that can refer to just a lot of different things, including sheer fabrics, but yukata qualify. They're single layer, just like uh, hitoi, but they are not, um, they're sheer if they're silk or they're cotton, so they're very lightweight. Um, what I'm wearing today is considered um, usumono. It is sheer. It's not as sheer as some things, but it is sheer. I, I have a better example. This is a sha. Um, Howry, we were talking about how even your outerwear would reflect some of these ideas, um, which is kind of, I don't know, I was just talking with the, some people earlier today about how kind of funny it is to wear a jacket that is this sheer and adds nothing in terms of warmth, but it's very stylish. I really like the way this looks when worn over something light because it has a waterprint on it, if you look really carefully when it's on something. You can kind of see the contrast. It, yeah, it's like a really cool waterfront. And that is actually woven in there. So that's really neat. But yeah, it's more like a layering piece. It doesn't actually keep you warm. So yeah, lace howry trend, big thing right now. 
um, great for summer, very, very trendy, especially, it's so funny, you'll be going, there's a couple parts of town in a lot of, like, um, big cities, where you'll, like, run into older ladies who, like, maybe have traditional hobbies, and they're always wearing, like, lace um, over dusters to keep them clean when they ride the train, very trendy, uh, like a Michiyuki. The last piece I, I pulled out that is Usumono, I just wanted to show because I feel like uh, obviously a lot of my collection is, is more women's wear. Um, I sometimes wear men's styles, but much rare, more rarely. Um, I feel like a lot of kimono can be kind of gendered, but um, you can wear whatever you like. And like I said, I do wear men's styles from time to time. Um, this is a Jinbei, which is a two-piece outfit it's super common to see these on sale for men like at a certain time of year when it gets hot um this print actually is supposed to kind of um, evoke rain um it's gonna kind of keep you thinking about being cooled off in a rainstorm and again pretty sheer um they always have like this this we call i mean you're gonna you're gonna hate me this word but this is actually what this trim is called it's called faggoting i'm sorry <laughs> um but that's what that trim is called if you want to google it and it's just like kind of an XX stitch um, trim. Uh, and I have the pants, but I wear this one sometimes. My husband wears it a lot. Uh, it's so much cooler than wearing a kimono right now. And I'm, I'm almost, I almost wore this <laughs> instead. I was like, but I'll be cute just this one. I definitely thought about it. So those are, that's how it affects what you actually wear. And like I said, some people are very strict about the, to the day when they switch over um, what they wear. So, and it goes back to that old calendar that we were just, I showed for a little brief period of time. Uh, next one. So like I said, as I said earlier, um, the, you wanna reflect nature. So that thing are things like flowers that are in bloom, fruits that are ripe, snow or water, holidays and festivals, and then bugs and animals. Um, you don't see too many animals. It tends to actually be birds more than animals as I was doing more research. And I just love that it's bugs. Bugs are great. Dude, Jinbei loungewear is awesome. I saw some company that was kind of releasing some kind of more women's style and I was like, hey, I wanna, I wanna get that anyways. Um, so we're gonna start pretty much just going through the months. Um, and I'm gonna pull out some of my personal examples that match. Um, and we'll talk about um, what they mean. Oh no, I forgot to pull a window over here, but I'll open a new tab. I have a, oh, thank you so much for the follow. I have a sheet that I was reading that kind of went along with some of this. There we go. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is called Shochikubai. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, which is pine, bamboo, and plum, and this is from um, a Chinese poem, and or not just a poem, but it's a motif, um, and it's a very common one. It does come from Chinese culture originally, and they are, they are known as the three friends of winter because these three plants don't really fade um, in the winter, so it's kind of like, you know, evergreen. Um, and I just wanted to point out that uh, a lot of these motifs in Japanese um, print and textile are heavily stylized and it's going to take a long time for you to recognize some of them and a lot of people spend a lot of time being like what is this motif you're not alone that's very common so um, I'm gonna pull out a few things that I have that have some of these prints on it so I think I did this last time So this is almost Shochikubai. It doesn't have um, plum on it though. Ta-da! Oh, was that upside down? No, it's one of those prints that goes both ways. <laughs> I like that. It's so ridiculous. Um, so pine in Japanese is is a very weird looking motif. It is this weird looking thing. They kind of look like clouds almost. They're interesting. That's a, like a really interesting shape. Um, bamboo leaves. And this has got, actually got sakura on it. Um, there are lots of garments that have multiple seasonal 
um, things on it. And some people really like them because they can wear them at any season. Um, and I prefer geometric prints, which don't have a season, if I'm going to worry about that. Um, but for some people, like, that's a huge thing they love to do, is to get things that kind of go, you can wear this at any time. So this would be good to wear kind of January into February, and maybe into March. Um, you can kind of wear bamboo kind of year-round. There's different types of bamboo that kind of really, really nail the seasonal moment, and we'll get into one or two of those later. Um, but yeah, this is a piece that has a bunch of different motifs on it. Personal little collection. Um, the other one that's on here um, is treasure ships and treasure. Um, that's because at the beginning of the new year, you want to think about auspicious things. So Shoshi Goodbye is very auspicious. You want to set the tone for your, for your whole year um, to be lucky. So treasure ships are like, hey, bring me that money for 2021. <laughs> So I have this one. Um, this is a ship that I have on an OB. Um, I like that a lot of the ships that you see um, on a lot of kimono motifs, they are these big Western style like galleons. And I don't really know particularly what's up with that. I mean, historically it has to do with the Portuguese, but it's just kind of odd. I think it's funny that that's, that's what's a thing. Um, and then the last one I have here, this has some plum and some um, chrysanthemum on it. This is just a vintage piece and I thought it was kind of nice to show off. Um, just different ways that these, these prints are printed. Like I said, ship happens. <laughs> because pirates, I love you guys. <laughs> You're amazing. Um, and this has also got bamboo on it, again, in a different way. It's just a stalk. Sorry if I can... Ugh show this it's just the stock of bamboo where the print is on so like i said these these prints become very very stylized they turn into almost just like geometric styles in a lot of ways so it can be hard to recognize them um in fact i was thinking earlier about this guy i was like those are some stars and the more i thought about it it's actually a print called shippo i don't remember what that means but i was like oh that's that's a pattern actually it's not stars it's overlocking circles and i forget the meaning behind that but um, it's funny, like, the more you get used to, like, seeing these prints, you start to recognize motifs, and that's kind of fun. Uh, and then, um, what's interesting about Japan, another thing, is that they don't celebrate the Lunar, like, Chinese New Year on Lunar New Year. I mean, they will, too, but they actually celebrate kind of the changing of the zodiac on New Year's. And they call it, and the whole thing is called Shogatsu. It's a big honking deal. This is actually one of those times a year that you see a lot of people actually wearing kimono. Um, I want to say coming of age happens around this time, and it's a huge excuse to wear really fancy frisore. You'll see a lot of like um, school girl kind of people in like fur coats. You go to the, the shrine. This is this is a big time that you see a lot of people wearing kimono. So it's kind of fun um, to see what people wear um, and choose to wear for those events. I'm gonna move on to February. All right, February. I just love all of these pieces individually. They're so beautiful. I'm gonna move my head because I'm over this for just a second. I'll go here. I'll move over here. Sorry, I have to keep moving myself. I apologize. Um, barren trees. Plum, thank you so much for the follow. Um, plum, camellia, holly, and daffodil. Um, I don't really have too much. I think I have the com I have an example of camellia, um, which is Ava, one of our local community members' favorite motifs. She got a whole bunch of stuff recently in a group order I ran that was like everything camellia, and I didn't, it's a beautiful flower and a beautiful motif. So let me find my one thing that I have. Well, so much for 
bunch from being organized. I don't know where it went. It's just a Ferochki. It's just a Ferochki, and I don't know where it went. I'm sorry. But it's very similar to that print right there in the display. Disappointment, I know. And the worst. Um, oh god, I'm sorry. I need to take one second to be stupid. I just want to move this stupid thing. Wow, go back. I didn't ask for that. I'm not very good at having a million things open at once. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I was like, I accidentally minimized the, uh, the, the twitch, and I was like, wait, I don't want that. Whoops. It's hit play. God. Sorry. Um, and I need to turn the code's captioning back on. Hopefully that'll pick up. Alright. Yep, it's working. All right, so next up, <laughs> it's okay. I know technology for real, though. Can we talk about that for a second? Um, so now we're starting to like get into spring, and so you have things like snow melting. Um, so you would have lots of streams and things like that. Um, you have mist and flowing water. I think dandelions is a really cute idea for motif. Um, I don't own anything dandelions. I, I'm gonna keep my eye out. It's like one of those things where sometimes I find out about motifs. And by the way, this is by no means a comprehensive list. These are just some suggestions. Um, another thing that happens in March, again, trying to talk about festivals, is Hina Matsuri, which is kind of like a girl's day. And they have these dolls they stack up that are all dressed in formal Heian era court uh, to represent like a wedding feast. And they even have like, um, like stacks of mochi and stuff. You want to get into really complicated doll sets and they're very, very expensive. Um, and so like every year girls get together, they have like a traditional meal and they put their doll sets out and it's super cute. Um, and sometimes you'll see those, the dolls are very stylized. They'll put the dolls as like a motif and I couldn't find an example, but I've seen them in the past. And I was like really annoyed that I spent a lot of time like Googling and I just couldn't find one, but they're really cute. And I think it's a cute idea to have little dolls on your kimono to celebrate, especially like if you have a daughter and you want to wear that, it seems like a really cute thing. Dude, that dead tree kimono is beautiful. That's a, that was a gorgeous piece. There's a lot of these that I like just doing some research. I was like, man, that's a, that's a gorgeous piece. Too bad I missed out on that. I keep having those moments. It's really funny. I was, um, talking with my friend last night when we were, we were trying to put the pictures together and I was like, man, I wish I had this kimono. <laughs> Kept going. Um, I do have, I have a habit of buying a ton of stream and water themed kimono pieces. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I know, is it research or is it window shop? Is it both? It could be both. Uh, I'm going to show the ones that are more winter appropriate in terms of like texture. Uh, again, we were talking about how like, um, there are lined and unlined obi even. Um, I'm gonna show the ones that are more winter appropriate. So this is one, um, this is a, a stream motif. And, I, and again, these, these get really, really geometric and quite, quite pretty in my opinion. I love them. Um, I don't know why I keep buying water motifs. It keeps happening. Yeah, both, both is good. Um, I have like three or four like water themed obis now <laughs> and I mm, mm, can't decide um this is one of my favorites it's I like this one a lot because it's subtle um it's not necessarily bright metallic and when you get when you're talking about obis the more metallic they are the more formal they are um this is a fukuro obi which is a formal style but this isn't like oh ice cream I want ice cream shoot I got excited dang um but uh, yeah, this is like a nice one because it's a little less formal and I can wear it at like a few more different occasions. I don't very much like tying or wearing a Nagoya Obi, which is like most people's go-to. Um, so for me to find like kind of casual Fukuro Obi is like a godsend. I get really excited when I get, when I find one of these. So um, when we, when I do another panel about talking about building your kimono wardrobe, I'll definitely touch on formality and how it you need to pick one and like kind of stick with it when you're starting out so you don't end up with a bunch of pieces that don't match formality wise let alone like 
cute print wise, seasonal wise. And then this is a very formal, gorgeous, and I love it to death, beautiful stream print. Very formal, look how shiny it is. This, I just love this print. It's so much, it's so extra, and I love it. And I think this says like flowing water, that's kanji. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with this one. Again, I have a tendency to keep buying similar motifs. So luckily water is kind of year round. Um, it's, you don't really see it that much in winter. That's like the only season you don't see it that much in, but yeah. Yeah, I know it's so hard, especially like when you see a good bargain or something that's in your size, I just snatch stuff up too. But if I were, if I were to go back and be a little bit more discriminating, discriminating, I would have a much more cohesive collection that I could wear a little bit more easily, but I digress. And I have some more water themes, but we're going to get more into summer and water later. So I'm going to show those off later. Next one. Um, this is another absolutely stunning piece that I found that's very clearly Taisho because of the red lining that's peeking out on the sides and corners. Um, in fact, let me show you this. Again, I said this piece here is Taisho. Um, it has red lining. And it's very, very, very common. Uh, it's a really easy way to help indicate what time period something is from. Um, also the sleeve length. Um, that is a true Taisho piece that is uh, a family heirloom, so it doesn't fit me because I'm tall and large and that is made for somebody small, but I keep them and I love them and I cherish them, so. I love this piece too, and it has a lot of these different motifs, which I thought was really excellent to be able to share with you. So, um, April is kind of peak cherry blossom season. I love it, it's gorgeous. Um, it also has uh, iris on here if you look carefully. I forget what these little white flowers are called. It's got peony, which is mentioned in this list. It's got um, wisteria. So yeah, it, this this one co covers a lot of them. And again, this is also the same time year for more flowing streams. So we already covered that one. Um, this is a furisode, by the way, guys, in case you're like interested in trying to find pieces like that. Furisode have the most like over the top beautiful prints. It's really rare to see one in black though, so like this is a rare piece because it's a kuro, ton, like kuro for, furisore, which is pretty rare. I own one actually that's a vintage piece that somebody gave to me and I didn't realize how rare it was. Um, but yeah, mostly furisore are in colors. This is beautiful for sure um, and quite an older piece. Um, I have a few examples of things like wisteria and cherry blossom. Um, again, to kind of keep it in the moment, as those cherry blossoms start to follow off, like, sorry, fall, fall off the trees, you want to you want to have those scattered cherry blossoms be part of your clothing too. Then it, everybody goes to do a thing called hanami, which means like flower viewing, and they'll go take a picnic and sit under trees that are blooming. And it's usually sakura. Sometimes it's wisteria, and sometimes it's plum. It's a very very seasonal thing to do. Um, it's a, like, it used to be a court pastime that only the, the royal imperial court could do, but it's a very traditional thing to do. <laughs> yeah, get drunk under a cherry tree. Get, get, some, get some like lovely white wine and get your friends together. Get in some kimono and go hang out under the beautiful scattering flowers. Yeah, soccer season, but make it gob. Yeah, absolutely. This is a really great piece. Um, I do love it. Let me grab the pieces that I have. Um, speaking of soccer season, but make it goth, um, one of my good friends went to Japan and was like trying to find pieces that would fit me because I'm tall and I struggle with this a lot. Um, so she went to like a flea market. She's like, big, whatever you have is big. <laughs> and she got this one for me, which I just absolutely love. Like, if you know me, I love dark, gothy things. And you can barely see it and barely make them out, but this is 
wisteria and this is a more stylized version versus the more kind of like actual pictures um that the the one on the, the screen is but yeah this one's a little bit more of a stylized version of wisteria i and wisteria is one of my favorite flowers it's so pretty i love purple um it's it's like a blue like royal purple it's really hard to see i finally found like an obi that's the same exact color to wear it with it's a little too formal but i also don't care i'm gonna wear it <laughs> I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> We're in America. Nobody knows if it's formal or not. Shh. That's kind of actually true. I kind of get away with some things because you're in America and people don't really care. Um, and then this one is another family heirloom. Um, it's also got a whole bunch of other prints. This is actually a Hitoi also. It's a single layer. Um, so it's really nice and cool to wear. Um, I'm, I'm trying to see if this is Sakura. I think it is. I always get Sakura and Plum confused because they're very similar. And the only difference is the Sakura has a little notch in the in the petal. And this one's very subtle. So I'm kind of like, are those notches or not? I think they are, though. Um, and this also has um, closed and open folding fans. It, if you look carefully and the fans also have prints on it so this piece could probably be worn in a lot of different situations um it's got bamboo if you look really carefully there's a cart on here which is also usually associated with like festivals that have like carts and like uh like parade floats they're kind of like old school parade floats um it's got bellflower on here which we'll cover later so yeah this this could be worn in a lot of seasons um, I don't typically wear white very much because it gets dirty and I'm a mess. I'm a hot mess. <laughs> I'm hot right now. <laughs> um, but uh, this can get worn a lot of different times. So that's, it's convenient. It's a nice piece. Oh, coffee man. Oh my god, you guys, I finally, I finally found the my, my Camellia Ferushki. I found it. <laughs> 10 minutes too late. <laughs> I'm doing okay. I know. I actually, I had some new pants that are like black and white houndstooth recently. And I put them on. I was like, oh, these are really comfortable. Why haven't I worn them? And I was like, walked over to my husband. I was like, I like my new pants. They're pretty comfy. And he just looked at me. He's like, you're going to get those stained. And I was like, how dare you? <laughs> Why would you tell me that? <laughs> That's just so rude. That's so rude. It hurts my feelings. Why are you like this? Um, this I, this one is plum for sure. I can tell that one's plum. Yeah, again, I, I struggle telling which one is plum and which one is, is Sakura. It can be really hard to tell them apart as a motif. Because like I said, they get them really stylized and it's really quite challenging. <laughs> I need a plastic cover for my body. You're not wrong. Um got May which is starting to get to warmer days I think in May is where you switch over to Hitoi which is a single layer um irises of like all sorts when I was doing the research they like listed like five or six different species of individual irises and I was like that's a little too much information <laughs> so that's a little bit much nobody needs to know all of that all of it. it's too much um but um, another thing that happens in May in Japan is uh, Golden Week, so you can't ever buy anything you want because there's lucky packs and everything sells out really crazily. Um, but part of that is um, Children's Day or Boys Day. It used to be Boys Day, but now it's Children's Day um, to go like you know how Hinamatsu is kind of like Girls Day, um, and that's why there's the association with uh, arrow fletching and armor in kimono stuff. Um, bamboo is a big theme again several different times a year bamboo comes up so it's kind of a year round hollyhock is a real thing hollyhock I guess has like a whole ass festival in Kyoto in May that I didn't write down all the insert like all of the information on but there is a whole apparent festival I guess so hollyhock big motif of May because like a lot of people associate kimono wearing with Kyoto um, because it's kind of like the cultural, like the old capital, and they really try to preserve the, that culture, so. 
Yes, the, that is a motif. <laughs> the, the Chinese imaginary flower called a carrot caravana. I have a caravana kimono. I was going to put it as one of these, but it's so dark, you can't really see it. So, um, I don't know anything about the medicinal uses of hollyhock, but I believe you. Um, do I have any examples for May? Let's see what I got. Mm, I think I skipped this one because I didn't want to. I don't have anything for May, you guys. I'm such a disappointment. Oh, wait, lilies. I have lilies. I know I do. I have lilies. Ha ha. I have them. I was like, I swear to God, I looked for one. I looked around and I found a thing. I have lilies. So bulb flowers are a thing. That's a really hard one to see. God, that's not really showing up at all. I'm so sorry. Is it any better over here? <laughs> I know, this is like a print on print. It's a woven print, so it's very hard to see. But hopefully you can kind of see it. Tone on tone, woven print, very difficult. Uh, but if you looked really carefully, I swear to you there were lilies. <laughs> Um, the start of summer, and this is when a lot of people will switch over to Usumono. Um, also you wear, like, this is like the start of kind of like Matsuri season, just kind of like the very beginning of it. And so you'll see a lot more yukata. I know. What is that? Yeah, you'll see a lot more yukata examples in the next couple of slides. Um, again, water, because Here's like a really interesting thing that you start to see when it gets really hot in Japan. They start to do things like wearing cold themes to try and evoke coolness. So blue is a very popular color in summer because you're trying to think to cool off. Um, you'll see snowflakes actually, even though it's not season, in season, you're trying to keep yourself cool with this idea. So it's kind of fun. Um, so yeah, you got handbands and make believes and I think I covered a lot. So pampas grass is actually on the fans themselves. It's that weird grass on there. Um, it's also got pinks, which we'll get into later. Um, but there's a lot of a lot of these. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I I don't I don't even know what to say about these closed captions. I almost want to just turn them off because they're hilarious. Uh, you know, I can't, I'm not in charge. I'm going to turn them off. I'm just going to turn them off, you guys. Let's be real. I, I think there's just, these words are like too complicated to really, to really, uh, <laughs> like what? What is that even? Hold on, I'm trying to find my OBS so I can move my head and get out of here. There we go. We're a little, a little bit further now. I'm just going to, yeah, let's just, let's pretend that never happened. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna not do it. Hopefully there will be other closed captions that work better and I apologize, sorry about that. Um, hydrangeas are on this beautiful uh, yukata and I have an example of maple leaves, maple leaves and another example of running water. As again, I have so much running water obese. This one is waves though, which is a little different. Um, this is from a friend who bought this for me for my birthday this year. Um, it's from a company called Double Maison, which I am super hype about. It's a, like a modern kimono company. Um, but yeah, it represents waves. Again, you're trying to evoke coolness, so it's like the idea of going to the beach, which I would really be about right now if this was not the time of Rona. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I need, I need somebody who knows these words. I don't, I'm sorry. Um, this is again, I was talking about how um, Kimoto has like, uh, sh like the, the like sheerness and whatever in actual obi as well. This is a summer obi. I can barely see the texture, but it's, it's a fabric what we call row. Um, this one's actually got a lining inside it, like a stiffener, because it's not that thick. Um, but Ro is, has like these horizontal lines on it. Um, similar to the texture of like my kimono that I'm wearing, this yukata has kind of this texture, but um, 
that's called row versus shaw, which is just kind of an open weave. Um, but this is a very, very summer, summer, summer. Even though it's got like one red um, thing. And I actually wore this to Poovy, Poovy's wedding, Poovy's wedding, believe it or not. Because <laughs> it was hot as balls. <laughs> and I was like, summer obi only. Summer kimono only. We'll die. Won't wear formal. We'll just wear nice. It's too hot. <laughs> it's five hot. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that at least it's pretty easy to follow. So I'm kind of mostly just covering these things. I will try not to die. I'm, I'm really warm, but it's okay. Um, Again, we were talking about this idea of keeping cool. Um, so you're gonna see more water, um, water lilies, pinks, um, which is a like really cute plant. I, I swear to God, where I'm from, they used to sometimes call them sweet williams, which might just be a species of pink. Anyways, um, morning glory. And then the last thing that happens in July that's important as far as festivals is Tanabata. Uh, so then, again, these are all just like excuses to wear kimono. So sometimes you'll see some really on theme kimono. Um, this is a kimono from a company called Three Magpies. Very modern kimono company actually out of Europe. Um, this is specifically about Tanabata, um, which is the legend with Orihime. And I can't remember her lover and they can't meet because the Milky Way gets in the way. But on the seventh day of the seventh month, um, they are able to meet, they're star-crossed lovers. So you'll see this one. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different names for the same thing. Um, yes, Hiko Bush. I'm terrible with like mythology. I'm sorry with this particular one um, because I, it's the same story told in Chinese and like I, I keep getting the names confused because of that. <laughs> um, so you'll see stars. And you'll see these wishes tied to bamboo trees. And sometimes they're written as poetry. Um, even if you don't have like actual, um, like an actual real bamboo tree growing anywhere near you. Um, some people will just like get a stick of bamboo in their house or like at a shrine or wherever so you can still do it. It's really cute. I've seen that in a lot of places where they don't have it. Like, like at some of the, the shrines and like, in, in the city where they don't have big bamboo trees to do this, they'll just have a cute like little stand one. And it's really sweet. Um, I was really sad because this year for Tanabata, I had wanted to go meet a friend down at like the Japanese Peace Garden in San Diego. Um, but you know, not all plans are gonna go as we wanted this year. But I wouldn't be talking to you if it weren't for that anyways, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I said, this topic in particular, I think, is, is not great for closed captioning, so. See, look, I, I was, I was like, I swear to God, there was a, a flower called Sweet Williams that is totally what pink look like. It's so funny. It's true. It is a silver lining. I'm, and I'm, I'm glad to be sharing this time with you guys, too, so. Um, but yeah, Tanabata is a huge festival, and it's like another, again, another excuse to be wearing, um, Yukata, which is when I see a lot of people mostly wearing um, kimono in Japan. I've only been there like two or three times, but my experience. Thank you so much for the follow. Oh, and here we go. Summer heat. August is like the hottest year in Japan. Um, it's even hotter um, than July, even though that's not necessarily the case um, for other countries. I'm just making sure I don't have my camera covering this slide. We don't look good. Um, this is a really beautiful, um, snowflake and this is what Japanese snowflakes look like. Um, and, uh, again, these are really stylized and another thing they have at a lot of Japanese festivals, they have the, the, um, what you call it, the, like the fishing game, the, the goldfish game. So this one, this particular... Um, other yukata, I think, really, really captures Matsuri season really well. Um, it has the fireworks, which is another really great uh, theme. 
that could work really well in the U.S. for Fourth of July, actually. So that's really fun. Um, and then bush clover, which is this thing in the bottom corner that's on top of bellflowers. That's actually got both. Um, it's called hoggy. Um, is bell is a uh, bush clover. It's funny. I've started to learn like the words for the different flowers that I'm interested in. I don't know bellflower. You'll, I'll get to spooky things in a second. <laughs> um, um, so I don't know the word for, for bellflower. I know the word for snow. I know the word for fireworks. I know the word for bush clover. It's really funny. I start to pick these words up and like when I go to Japan and I'm looking for specific kimono items, um, they get really like, oh, you, you speak great Japanese. Like you've got great vocabulary. I'm like, no, I just know weird flowers. I'm useless. <laughs> anything to say um yeah um goldfish are super appropriate for summer like they're so on topic because there's so many mods where that's a thing um i oh god i missed out on a really great polyester hitoe this summer and i'm still salty about it when i think about it it was like a used kimono shop online that went out of business and i should have snagged it oh well oh well there'll be another time um, so spooky themes. Um, remember I was telling you, you want to try to invoke the idea of cool? I know, that was the only reason I didn't buy it, but it was such a dang cool, like, neat looking kimono, and usually it's not too hot here, so I was like, ah, I should get it. It was, uh, orange and teal, and ah, oh, such a good color combo. <sighs> the one that got away, yes, definitely Repichiroya, 100% Repichiroya. Um, so spooky themes. Um, you don't see this one a ton, but it does come up. And what it is, is the idea of trying to keep cool. You want to send a shiver down your spine. So sometimes you'll see spooky themes. And um, another thing you will also see this time of year, um, because it's obon season, you will, might see skeletons. Um, Japanese people love puns just as much as the rest of us. <laughs> I think maybe more. Um, and the word, like, so Obon is uh, a festival of the dead. And it involves, like, grave sweeping, just kind of keeping memory. And a big part of it is, like, a dance festival. So another huge excuse to wear your yukata. When I was a kid growing up, because I am part Japanese, um, we would attend several different Obon festivals. Even here in the United States, there's kind of like an Obon circuit. It's very sad that, that didn't happen this year. But... Um, I was planning on trying to go to at least like one or two. I haven't done it since I was a kid. I don't really remember the dances that well. There's some really famous ones. Um, but la last year what came out that I was like, dang it, I really want this, was a an obi that had dancing skeletons on it. Um, because, so the word to dance means is dori. And so you have like a bon, obon dori, which is like the obon festival dance, the street dance I was talking about. So they had dancing skeletons because it was bone dory and I was like, stop it and i was like no and we got this is how they were selling it and i was like shut up just shut the fuck up i wanted it so bad but it was really really yeah really expensive and i was like no i really wanted it and i, I would have had to get a shopping service and everything yeah bone dory i was like shut shut up spooky skeletons absolutely um yeah, super great. Um, it was a great, great theme. Really into it. A++. But spooky themes are a part of summer. Um, there are there are some famous, like, yokai prints that do sometimes get pr pr printed into kimono. Um, but yeah. Uh, I have one Feroshki that has yokai on it. That was an example of spooky season. Spooky season. And also, I've got a couple other things. So, let's, this is so Feroshki. I don't know if you guys know or if you care. They're um, you use them to wrap things up. Actually, this is a tenugui. I lied to you, but you use them to wrap things up. And so this one I thought was super cute. This is um, paper snowflakes, and it's got scissors on it too. Um, really great for keeping the idea of keeping cool. And again, very cool colors. You're trying to keep yourself chilly. Um, this is, I buy a lot of these in Japantown, by the way, in SF, for those of you who are local, um, support your local stores. I am a huge fan of them. They're super cute. Um, but this is my spooky 
technically, which is the hand towel that Jess got me for my birthday this year. And it's got like all the different yokai on it and their different names. One of my favorite is this guy, the Caracasa. It's like a one-eyed haunted umbrella. What? That's amazing. I just love the creativity of Japanese, like ghosts and haunts. But yes, the idea is to give yourself a chill so it cools you off. This is fun. Um, and then I have one. Oh, let me see if I can find them. Oh, this one doesn't have one eye, but they traditionally do. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, here he is. It's a haunted umbrella. Whoever heard of a, such a thing? And there's... <laughs> I'm going to mention um, of Six Weeks' favorite um, yokai, which I don't think is on here, but it's like a haunted, like, creepy guy who has, like, an eyeball in his butt. That's all it is. It's the butt. It is the butt. The haunted eyeball butt. <laughs> I read this story about that. It's just, like, some guy was drunk and was, like, wandering. This is, like, literally the, the street, uh, the story is, like, once upon a time, there was a guy walking in the street, and he, like, heard something behind him, and he turned around, and then there was this guy who was, like, literally trying to goat see him, but it was just an eyeball. <laughs> and he was like, ah, and then he ran. That's the end of the story. I don't really know. I don't get it. It's, like, one of the best ridiculous um, yokai that's out there. Anyways, spooky stories. <laughs> See, it is scary. Did it give you a chill down your spine? Are you cooler now? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyways, spooky themes. Um, here is a Froshki that I <laughs> don't know. Um, that pretty much covers everything on the seven plant, seven grasses or plants. It's a, it's supposed to be grasses in some list. But there's flowers on here. They're all like kind of long shoot kind of plants, but they're not all grasses. So whatever. And it's funny because like I I know a lot of these um, words in Japanese more than I recognize them in English, like the Joe Pie weed and stuff like that. Like I don't really know what that looks like, and I don't know which one of these it is. I only know some of them. This is the. One that's in gold and also in silver is pampas grass. Um, we had we talked about huggy earlier, which is the bush clover. It's got like the round leaves. Um, pinks we talked about earlier, which I, I know are on here, but like kind of in small numbers. I don't know what the long grassy one that's just kind of like dotty. I don't know. Bellflower I see that's kind of a star shaped flower, which is this guy right here. Um, yeah, I don't, there's a lot. Um, I love that insect cages are on the list. It's true. It's also true. Um, I, I like the Japanese names for these better. So like the more you get into this, the more you start recognizing just the Japanese names for all of these things. And also weird fact, there are some things that have two words for them in Japanese and they don't, they're not any different. Like for example, um, Momiji in Kaide, kaide it, it, it means maple leaf and there's not, it's not like red maple leaves are different than green maple leaves. No, they are both maple leaves or, and it's just a thing that probably is like regional, like more people in Kansai call them one thing than people in like, you know, other parts of Japan. So it's weird. You'll find that there are some of these words, um, but yeah. Uh, I also love that insect cages are a big part of this time of year, um, and so are moons and rabbits. Uh, I it can't I don't know. Uh, I think momiji is more the shape than anything else because also the word for chicken feet is momiji. <laughs> so I don't know, don't really know. But most people when they hear momiji think of maple leaves. Because I only know the chicken feet one because my husband has a cookbook in Japanese and it called for momiji and it took us a long time to figure out what they wanted and it, it, it was for ramen so it yes very weird <laughs> um 
yeah, it might just be the shape. I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is very weird. Um, I got distracted. We were talking about moons and rabbits. Hi, do you know the story of the rabbit and the moon in in Japan? Instead of like a, the man and the moon, they have a story about the rabbit is in the moon, and that's actually comes all the way back. We're gonna go all the way back to see Serenity. Um, in Japanese, Sailor Moon's name, like her human name, is Usagi, which means rabbit, and then her last name is Tsukino, which means of the moon. So that's a fun little tidbit. Um, there is a huge other festival, like how we talked about um, flower viewing. There's another one called Skimi, which is moon viewing, similar courtly pastime that has now become a thing that a lot of people like to do, um, especially for Harvest Moon. This year is October 1st, if you would like to try and participate. Um, so it's coming up, guys. Um, this is a print that I find that's actually really hard to grab because they tend to like list these limited print items like oh it's time for moon viewing and then they only produce like moon themed items for like a very short period of time and you just try and like grab them when you can but then like they just then they stop to discontinue selling them they're like i love space though dang it um but yeah moon viewing is a very very popular thing to do and it's a very lovely theme um especially if you happen to be born in the year of the rabbit this is a great theme for you in japan Yes, the first of Halloween, <laughs> as I also tend to know it. Um, October, um, start of autumn weather. Ginkgo is one of my absolute favorite October themes. I love the way it looks. It's beautiful. Um, I hate grapes, persimmons. Persimmons are such a perfect fall fruit. Um, I love it. Fallen leaves. Chrysanthemums are in bloom. And ears of rice just means like the part of the rice that has like, you know, like how when you like see grass and it has like grains on it, that's what an ear of rice is. Because um, it's about to be harvest time. So it's again very, very similar to like, you know, how in the West there's things like Oktoberfest and stuff like that. That is a harvest fair and stuff like that some of those same themes like correspond but they're just more the foods that happen to be in japan so kabocho would be actually a good thing so pumpkins yes but japanese pumpkins um and oh uh, here's another thing um like american culture of course has permeated japanese culture you can find a ton of like halloween themed kimono um and it's not yokai it's specifically american style halloween purple and orange, pumpkin-y, ghosties, like that kind of stuff, which I love. I had like a scrunchie somewhere that's just spooky Halloween stuff. And it's not just like Lolita that does that. You can also find it in kimono. Super cool. Um, try to think. Got distracted. Ginkgo. Anybody playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp still right now? Because Ginkgo is the current event and I'm like, this is a little early because <laughs> I don't know if any of you have a ginkgo tree anywhere near you. They aren't yellow yet. Hello? What's up with that? Um, just a just a thought that I was having that I really like that Animal Crossing does kind of tend kind of with seasonality. Um, it's kind of fun, like with the cherry blossom event that was earlier, but I thought that was fun. Um, I have, an ex I don't have anything ginkgo that's also like Hmm, something that I want to get for myself. Um, I do have an example of grapes. So let me grab that. And oh, I missed I missed Hoggy earlier because I was talking about how I like it a lot because um, I own quite a few pieces that are Hoggy. I also just love purple, so that's not surprising. I got I got kind of guilt tripped into buying this because I went to like a store and I was like I was like I need something purple and I wanted to buy a purple obi to go with that dark wisteria look and this is obviously more wine and this like poor lady dug through all of the obi in this shop and she's like i have this one and i was like yeah you know what that's fine i was there for like 45 minutes and she was trying so hard to help me and i just felt so guilty because i was the only customer in this shop 
and it was like a weekday and they were really slow and they were like, Ooh, customer. And I just felt really guilty that she'd spent so much time with me. And I was like, eh, sure. But I like Hagi, so this is fine. Um, that beautiful reversible, very, um, seasonal grapey wine theme. <laughs> I love these reversible ones. These are cool. Again, I got this in Japantown and SF if you're around. I think these are the reversible ones are slightly more expensive. <clears throat> I use I use these a lot when I'm dressing in kimono because I don't want to have to own purses that match everything that I wear. Um, I make like a little bag out of these guys instead. And then this is my Hagi. And it also has like a couple of other seasonal grasses like that we were talking about. So it's got Hagi on this one. And then I don't know which one this is because I'm terrible with my names on this particular guy. I see. I think this might be the balloon flower. Um, this one's very per perfectly fall themed. And I love these, these two paired together. It's very seasonal for... Later this this time of year, like later in September, it's too dang hot to even think about this because this one's a line awase. And I forgot to mention in September, there is like a whole day where you swap your wardrobe over and you want to like hang everything up and air it out. So I kind of feel like I'm doing that with this stuff back here. Um, it's because in Japan, humidity is a huge problem and your, your kimono can get moldy. Well, if you're buying vintage kimono, there's a lot of like mold spot, mold damage very common problem. Yeek. Yeah, there's like an autumn, because like it's like the end of the, the humid humid season and sometime in September, so they're like, ah, the humid is finally away, so air all your kimono out before you swap your winter wardrobe out. It's, it's a, it's, there's like a whole day for it. Um, I'm not doing that, because I don't have humidity problems, but it is a thing. This one, there, there was a theme that was a little bit earlier that I didn't put on here because it was like so specific and it was like the first wild goose of the season. And I guess that must be from a poem. And again, a lot of times a lot of these things are like classically inspired. Um, I found these wild geese, um, but there's a lot of like ukiyo-e, traditional Japanese prints that are like of a person looking up and surprised and it's like, see, like the weather looks kind of the beginning of fall and it's like the first, you heard the first goose. And I'm like, I don't know how this is a seasonal theme. Like, I don't, like I understand the idea of it, but I don't understand how that is portrayed in kimono. Is there like just one goose? Is that, and how do I know that's the first goose? I don't know. I thought it was really kind of weird. The first of gooses. <laughs> yeah. Actually, now I'm thinking of Perth, the cowardly dog and the goose god. <laughs> anyways, anyways, wild geese are very much like a November theme. Um, no, I definitely get that feeling, but it's just kind of a weird thing to try and depict is just a single goose because it's very specifically that's and there's a word for it, like a special word is the first goose of fall. Very interesting. Um, this is a, what is it called? Chest, chestnut. Yes, chestnut is a very like common Japanese like treat this in in fall. Yeah. yeah, I know it's a bad translation. There's not a really good word for that. Um and pine needles and fallen scattered leaves. Um I really like this one cuz it has like um a ginkgo and a momiji and um bamboo and the pine needles. I think that's a really good one. This, this image right here, it's got a little bit of all of that. So it's a very good fall season one. Um, I don't, I don't know that I had anything that really works. So like if we talk about your own kimono wardrobe. I don't personally wear that much that is in like November, December. Cause first of all, it's too hecking cold. Second of all, um, I'm busy doing like family stuff that's more US style, so I don't really, but I was just thinking it'd be really fun to do, if we're talking about like kind of more local traditions, like if you're a US or a 
uh, Canadian person who does Thanksgiving to have like a turkey instead of a goose and maybe have a cornucopia and like pumpkins and squashes. Like that would be a really fun way to bring your own cultural seasonality into kimono. And then you can find those things. There's a lot of vegetables for whatever reason. People really like vegetables as a theme in Japan. So you can find these pieces. I don't know about a turkey, but you know, make it happen. Somebody could do that. <laughs> I think it'd be really fun. Um, and then the last season is winter, of course, uh, in December. Um, citrus tends to fruit in winter. Um, for those of us who live here, we know that. Uh, yuzu is a Japanese citron. It's bumpy and it's like one of my favorite flavors of all time. Um, snowy landscapes, um, frost covered trees, and daffodil is back on here and I had a hard time finding any information on why it was on here, but I think because it's one of the earliest flowers of spring, this is kind of the reverse idea of like wearing icy themes in summer. Um, you're trying to like hurry spring step essentially, like wish it were spring sooner. So you, you wear kind of the earliest flowers of spring. Um, but yeah, um, those are a bunch of different things. I have a few snow themed stuff. Um, again, this one is a stylized snowflake. And it's got a deer in it with, again, our friend Momiji. Chicken feet. We're, gonna, we're forever going to call them chicken feet. Um, this is one of my favorite kimono for, like, early winter wearing. I think I've only really worn it in November. Um, deer kind of evoke a fall feeling as well. So this is kind of like a very late fall, maybe early winter kind of first snow um, feeling with this ice blue. It's one of my favorite pieces. Again, I wear a lot of black, guys. It's a problem. Um, and then this one is another beautiful winter themed obi. Pretty formal again. This is another fukuro. Try not to like fully on the um, It's supposed to be misty mountains with snow on them. It kind of gives me a feel of like um, the ocean as well, and I love it. You know, winter seasons. <laughs> yes, all the black. I agree, hundred um, percent. But it gives me it gives me the feeling of the ocean too. So I wear this one with the the kimono that I wore for the fashion walk a lot because for me it kind of really gives me the feeling of California with having like the mountains right by the sea. So that's kind of a kind of a thing that I did for myself but it's kind of fun to like have these ideas when you're dressing like oh I'm dressing really like to, to mirror the local either geography or weather that's kind of a fun thing to do definitely yeah definitely Tolkien vibes 100 percent so those are all the those are all the months but we're gonna have maybe one more slide oh my god I put my kimono right on my mouse pad these are some resources uh, again this will be available for you guys to check out later um, Billy Matsunaga is a wonderful, adorable German who moved to Japan. She's a certified kimono instructor. She's got great, lively YouTube content. She's got some like how to sew your own things. Um, I love her. She's like way better at any kimono thing than most people because she's like into popular stuff, but she also is again certified and can tell you anything you want to know about how to dress formally if you need that. Um, but I like that she talks more about like kind of fun pop stuff too. Um, I think during my last how to wear like how to tie casual obi, somebody asked me about shoes. Um, <laughs> I know it's so weird. I don't understand, dude. <laughs> um, somebody asked me about shoes. She did like a whole YouTube series on the different types of, of Japanese shoes and where to wear them as well as like what, how and where to, when to wear Western shoes with kimono too. So she's a great person to check out. Uh, a lot of the references I did for this uh, was from the kimono lady. She's no longer active. Um, she translated like kind of a tea ceremony guide to seasonality into English. And that's where a lot of these have come from. Um, so she did like the first six months in like really kind of deep detail with like, like pictures and stuff. And then she kind of just got tired of it and just like did a whole bunch of just written out, which is a little hard for me to follow because I like visuals myself, but she's, it's very in-depth. It's 
very, very in depth. And she also has a kind of a chart that I've posted before that's got like all the different months, like whether to wear. Um... Dude, let me tell you about how hard it was for me to Google some of these, um, like these themes. So Tsubaki is the name for Camellia in Japanese. And it's also the name for a million different stupid anime characters. So if I Google Tsubaki Kimono, let me tell you what comes up. <laughs> it's very frustrating. So yes, they're just they're just plant plant words. So it's a lot of that going on. Um, so like yeah, you know, like just name somebody flower. That's a that's a thing that's been going on since literally the tale of Genji. Um, like Lady Murasaki, her name is literally a flower name. So <laughs> I just had a lot of trouble trying to find examples of some of these things because I kept coming up with like kawaii version of like blah 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 anime character in their yukata i was like dang it <laughs> there was a lot of that going on and then ready set kimono is another um canadian who puts out really great youtube tutorials on how to get yourself dressed i love her too um doesn't seem to be active right now she's got really fun like how to do some really classic kimono ties um her stuff's a little bit more formal and more traditional um, but she did like a whole Christmas theme set one time called uh, like the 12 days of Kitsuke, uh, which means like coordinate um, and kimono wearing. And each, she does like a different uh, way to tie your obi for each day. And it's, it's fun. It's fun that she does that. Um, but it's all got like, she like literally starts every video. On the first day of Kitsuke, my true love gave to me. And she's like, whatever the obi is for the day. She sings it for you. It's pretty funny. Um, now it's time for Q&A. You may ask me your questions if you have any. And I'm going to take a minute to take a drink. I hope that was informative and not boring. <laughs> I'm very sweaty in this beautiful yukata. How am I? I'm good. I'm good. I hope everyone had a great time. I know I'm like the very last panel and it's like kind of like the OG J fashion. Um, I know it's a great word. Um, there's a lot of problems with Japanese having a lot of like contextual words like that. It's so funny. Do you, okay. So, uh, there are a lot of I, okay, this comes back to like, I'm going to do a whole panel. I know the OGJ fashion. Um, I'm going to do a whole panel on how to start your own wardrobe and like what to buy, like what you're looking for. And like, one of the things I don't want to deal with is all of the dry cleaning bills. <laughs> so I don't buy a lot of silk kimono. I have a few. They're beautiful. I've been most of them, the prettier prints, they're all on silk. Um, but they're very hard to get cleaned properly in the United States. There are a couple of dry cleaners in the U.S. who do specialize in doing it, but it's also a crapshoot. And do I have to, do I, do I choose to send it back to Japan to get cleaned because there are cleaning services I could do that with? Mm, it's hard to say. I personally buy a lot of polyester and cotton, um, and, and also hemp, uh, kimono myself. And that's part of my buying process because I tend to wear things more casually. I want to wear it to conventions. I don't want to have to worry about somebody stepping on my hem um, or like spilling a drink on me. That's not, I don't want to be concerned about it. I don't want to be like, my beautiful, you know, $3,000 kimono. But like, I don't want to worry about that. Um, so for me personally, yes, almost everything I own is hand washable. Um, you can actually machine wash some of them and that's a whole search term is like machine washable kimono. Um, but you put them in like a net bag because the main thing you really need to be careful of um, is you don't want the kimono to get twisted and you don't want, especially with the women, to, this is a very delicate place on the kimono where the sleeve attaches to the body and uh, you don't want this to like get ripped off. And I have like an old piece that I need to repair because somebody at some point got it like badly dry cleaned and um yeah the sleeves halfway off it's like up to here it's barely sewn on so that's a that's a thing um but yes hand washing them is not hard you kind of like keep them in a square shape there's actually like youtube tutorials so 
I like washable team level personally. Um, but they are not the most elaborate and they are certainly not like the big eye catchers. All right, let's hear the Momiji explanation. I'm, I'm, I'm invested at this point. Do go on. Okay. I knew it was going to be something weird and regional. Um, but it's because of the shape. See? I knew it. I was like, I knew it's because of the shape. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's going to be very, very specific and weird. Um, for buying yukata, um, there's Sakura Sakura and they have a web shop. It's not on their Google, which is really, really annoying. Um, if you go to like, there's like your Japantown SF, um, Facebook, like, like the, the, the business association, they're trying to promote their stuff. They have the website. Um, they don't have a ton listed. Um, there is another shop that is really, really funny. To go um, shopping at called Sharaku and it's on the side of the street where the new people building is if you've been to baby um, but it is run by the they, they, they have aura readings if you're into that which is great yes there is a grumpy old sales lady in there she, I think she like either lives out of the back or like she just sits back there and watches her soaps and she really wants you to come in there and get the heck out like, come get your aura red, get your photo, and then leave my shop so I can go back to my soaps. I always want to get in there and, like, dig, because her shop's got a bunch of old secondhand stuff. And I found some really great things, like that, um, the Momiji, um, Summer Obi was from her, for example. Um, and a lot of, like, my, um, Obijime are from there. But she does not want you to be browsing. She's so funny. Even like, she'll like kind of chill once you like get a stack of stuff, but she's constantly like, what are you looking for? Can I help you? Can I help you? What are you looking for? Is there something I can help you find? Like it just gets, it gets, it gets really intense after a minute. She's really funny. Um, but she has some really good stuff and I really like shopping there. If she would just give me some space, but there's no way that that place is going to be open anytime soon because, um, it's a really small shop. There's no way to socially distance in there. Um, dude, right? See, I'm not alone. I'm definitely, I knew I'm not the only person who had that experience with her. She's really funny. But she's got stuff that the other shops don't have. There's a shop that's on the bridge. Um, and I can't remember the name of it right now. I actually recently did this on Facebook. Somebody asked me for like the whole list. I'll find it. Give me one second. I will include also the Japanese, uh, sorry, the Japan town in LA. There's a bunch of them. If you'll give me one second. I know I posted this as a reply to somebody's thread very recently in a different thing. If I search for, I wonder if my name will come up. I search for my own name. That's usually the best way to find it. <sighs> Is it, did I comment on something? I wonder if this will come up. Boo. I, I recently like wrote the whole list of every shop I could find, um, both in SF Japantown, San Jose Japantown, um, LA area. I didn't find anything in San Diego, but maybe there is one and I just don't know it. Um, Maybe this one. Is this the one? Nope, that's not the one. Dang it. Well, I can't find it right this second, but I will comment at some point if I do. Um, but yeah, I'll add it to the slides. Um, so first of all, make sure it's actually your size. That's my biggest problem is I'm very tall, like I said, or I have like wide hips too. 
I've bought so many yukata because I thought they were cute and they were cheap and I just bought it and then I found out it wasn't my size. And another thing to avoid are like tourist pieces that are not traditional yukata if you really... I own a tourist piece too though so I can't really say don't do it. It's just you should recognize them for what they are I guess. Um, and I can show it to you so you too can recognize the signs. Give me one second I'll grab it. This one's actually one of the better tourist pieces that I have bought ever in my life. It's not terrible. So one of the first things you want to look for, this one actually does have the, does it have a center back seam? This one does. So that's a good thing. Um, this one is uh, incredibly short and a very odd print for it to be a woman's yukata, but it has a woman's sleeve. And what's the difference between a men's sleeve and a woman's sleeve is that the the sleeve is actually open because if you're wearing multiple layers you want a hint of your um your jube on your under layer to show in your sleeve splits kind of like a little little spicy something um so that's like that's all giveaway this is a very weird length um it's still pretty wide like sleeve wise so it's kind of like it's got a weird both male and female vibe from it which is a little bit odd um and then <laughs> this is the certain dead giveaway it's got a freaking belt loop this is probably intended to be like something you could wear like at a onsen and it could be either gender um it's not necessarily like it's full-on tourist piece but this is this is the dead giveaway right here <laughs> um also like i said the center back seam is a big is a big one um but yeah, those are, those, are the, those are the kind of the biggest things. It's like, it's weirdly unisex, um, and at the same time, it's got belt loops. So it was probably intended to be more like a resort piece than necessarily like a full-on just made for tourists thing. So that's okay. I wear this one too, so I don't even care. I love um, checker print in Japanese. It's called Ichimatsu, um, after apparently a kabuki player who made checker print very famous at some point but um i love this print i don't care if it's a weird piece i wear it too uh things that i recommend they have these like really great yukata sets that come with an obi and they come with like koshihimo which is a waist ties and an obi um there's a really great website that has all those pieces i think when you buy it uh called yukata yasan Sorry, yukata yasan, yukata ya, which is like a yukata shop. Ya means shop, and san is just like either it could be three or it could be like Mr. Y Mr. Mr. Yukata shop. Um, I will link it shortly. Um, they've got a bunch of different deals. They're not they're reasonably priced. They ship from Japan. I think they're associated with Kimono Yamato, which is a big big shop in Japan. Um, I don't know that they have an English language website, but you can ship internationally last time I checked. Um, and they do have sets, but you just need to add the, I guess I could do this in this stream, hold on, let me get here. Let's just go to this website. Yukata, wow, you that's how you spell anything. God. You know it's been a long day when I search spelling things that crazy. Um, so I have the Google Translate app up here, right there, this guy, it automatically translates. Um, yeah, I know, lucky pack, they definitely have them, because it's kind of the end of the season for these. Um, I pulled some of the images from the slideshow on from here, specifically, in case you're curious. Um, they have sets, let's go to women's ladies. And I like that you can shop by size, because again, I, the thing I always fuck, screw up with is the size. Um, uh, choose by size. Okay, so you can get the pre-tied obi, um, which I think is translated here as soldier band set. Uh, and then they have like these two, and I don't know what the difference is right this second. So I'm just going to click on one of them, see what comes up. I love this color. This is beautiful. 
and then click on this and it'll tell you what it comes with. It comes with shoes and obi and this, and usually it includes two of uh, two Hokoshi Hino. Um, and I'll show you the texture. So these sets are pretty good deals. I mean, this is like on sale right now. That's not a bad price at all. The shipping's gonna be a little spicy, I'm sure. But uh, I like that they have small, medium, and large sizes. I would fit a large, probably, she said, without looking at the size detail. Yeah, I'd fit the large, no problem. That's easy, great. It's a great size. Um, I put a size guide on my kimono that was for sale recently. Um, you essentially the the thing I always quickly look at is um I think it's the my it's called the maitake my maitake I can't word right now especially not Japanese it means the length from like the top of the shoulder down to the hem um and that should be about like a little bit less than your height is kind of ideal it can be as tall as your height and maybe a little bit more but then you have a really big ohashori or that's fold in the middle um. I kind of wear anything, I'm like 175 centimeters. Um, I buy anything that's like 167 through like 170. I don't really want to go as far as 175. I could though. Um, yeah, they're, the whole dressing set is a separate thing, which I would, I think you can buy that here too, probably. Coordinate, dressing accessory set, yes you can. Um, this is great right here. That's what you need. Or if you want to get more fancy, get one of these other ones. These are great. They're not very expensive. Um, these include all like the weird accessories you need to buy. Yes, I am a tall lady. And so like I said, I have a hard time where I keep buying kimono. I'm like, this doesn't actually fit, but I really wanted one. So I bought it and then I regret. <laughs> um, these are super great. Um, what's nice about this is that they're, they are the summer weight ones. Um, I'm actually wearing, dig in here, this as pictured in here, um, it's a summer weight one, it's sheer, so it's breathable versus like the hard, thick winter one. Let's slide this back into its home. Ooh. Um, this is a great place to start shopping. There are like US stores if you want them and you want them now that are not terribly expensive. Um, there's this shop in San Jose called Nichi, sorry, Ni, Nichi, Busan. Dang, I'm gonna, hmm. Yeah, Nichi Bay Busan. I had some of the words. Oh my goodness, Nichi Bay Busan. They have a really lovely um, yukata section. They got the shoes. They got you covered. So Bay Area, if you're in the South Bay at all, I highly recommend this shop. Um, it's been forever since I've been in here, but here's somebody trying on one of these guys. So that's a, that's a recommendation I have um, for you. That is true, but it is changing. I have a whole book that I think you would really like that's about softer obi. It's called Heko obi. And Heko obi also can refer to single layer yukata obi. Um, I talked about that a little bit in my last panel on kimono. Um, let's see. Do they have samples here? If I can find it in all the mess. So this is a specifically more for yukata only, but I sometimes made cheap. Um, it's a single layer. This would also be considered a heko obi for some people. Um, this is also, they're both hanhaba obi. Um, and this one is meant for dressing. Like you could wear this as yukata, but you could also wear it with casual kimono. And this is a double-sided one. Um, so this would be appropriate to wear with more things. Um, so that's, that's a different thing, but heko obi actually is becoming more popular as a casual style. It's kind of like how um, kimono as a general style and culture is kind of having a uh, revitalization in Japan where people are kind of wearing it kind of more for funsies, like hanging out, fashionable thing to do. 
and it's a more comfortable style for a lot of people because you just tie it tie it off um instead of like these intricate bows um and it's less structured uh i've definitely seen more people being more acceptable towards it it's a more casual look for sure you can't wear it in any sort of formality um yeah heko obi is like totally having a, a new moment it's traditionally for kids and younger women, but we are moving forward in this new brave kimono world and trying new things. So that's definitely a thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there's like the whole notion that free sode was only really for young women. And like, that's true to a point, um, but that's really kind of becoming kind of like passe. A lot of, a lot of people love the way the long sleeves look. I find them a bit fussy. I don't really like them. I only own one thing with sleeves that long. Um, but yes, I have a whole book on how to sew your own, um, heko obi. And if you give me a second, I can grab it so you can get kind of a preview. I think it'd be really up your alley specifically for like Mori, the, like the textures and the, and the colors they use in that book, I think are really kind of up your alley. Let me go see if I can find it. being a mess today oh my god we've stayed like half an hour over <laughs> i don't care though um this is the book i can write the is been in the thing um but let me see it, it's like a tutorial on how to like take scarves like western style scarves um and make them into obi which you think is super cool so I think these are very more soft and delicate kind of styles that would be like way more what you'd be into, I think. It is in Japanese, but it's actually really easy to follow. Like it's very picture heavy. Um, it's just a lot of coordinates and like where to shop. But it has like kind of like tie your scarf like this style stuff. And it's very simple. Uh I bought it just thinking it was a book on how to do different musubi, which is like the word for not. Yeah, these are just like literal scarves, you guys. Like just literal, regular old ass scarves and how to tie them. I'm gonna follow me. Yeah, if I get rid of that, it won't be so much glare, I don't think. Is that better? I could probably make myself bigger if you want to see more of that. Hello! Oh my god, big. <laughs> so, um, yeah. It's got like, just, these are just like regular classic, like, long scarves. Um, but yeah, I think this is like way more like, and it's got tutorials on how to like sew them with measurements in centimeters. And this one's got some like, how to put, where to put some crochet details if you want to have that kind of stuff on there you, you cottagecore mori fans put get yourself some doilies um and it's got methods for like how to tie these specific more complicated ties using the ob that you made yourself so this is a really fun book um Fula. wow i can barely read right now Fab fabric something no hone. I think it says fabric OB book <laughs> is the name of it. No, it's okay. Fabric fabric OB book. I think is literally what it says. I don't necessarily know the kanji for OB, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, but I'll put the isbin in here because like that's what you need. That's what you really need. Yes, I could do that. Isbin. And I got this at the Kinakunya. Um, I'm sure they still have copies of it. Isbin is for everyone. Yes, right? I love Isbin. And this is another really great um, book that I have on how to tie Hanhaba Obi, because again, I'm a casual dresser. So this was really fun. It's just really simple walkthroughs. 
on how to dress casually, like ties, ties and ones are really, again, very simple how to walkthroughs on how to tie everything. And this one's really fun because speaking of seasonality, um, it says right here, dress of the season. <laughs> so the idea of, of uh, keeping it fresh for the season, it tells you like what, what, what season this is like really, really hip for, which I think is really cute. Um, and it says it in here, like, dress for like fall, winter, autumn. So like the idea of seasonality is still very much in play um, in Japanese traditional clothing dressing. And this is a bit more like traditional-ish. This one's a little bit more out of the box, which I think is great. But yeah, I definitely have a lot of kimono books. <laughs> I love them. And I love that they're this size. This is like such a cute size. Makes me happy. What doesn't make me happy is like looking at the price of these books in yen. <laughs> it's always so funny. Like, this book could have been $15, but yet I paid $25 because shipping and handling, it is what it is. So any other questions, guys, before I call it a night for you guys? Yeah, see, Fabric Obi no and I swear to God, I was like, it's just this Fabric Obi book, I'm pretty sure. Pretty certain. Um, I shop a lot on Rakuten. Great, I'm glad you found it. I'm glad you were able to find it easily. Um, but yeah, the next thing I want to do is a, like, deciding on what you want to, like, how you want your wardrobe to start. Do you really want to wear formal stuff? Do you want to do tea ceremony? Is that a thing you want to do? Um, and if that is, then like you really need to start really understanding formality in depth um, versus like someone who's casual like me and like kind of to mix and match my Western clothes, which would be a totally different panel on like how to mix your Western styles with your Bafuku without making it weird. Um, but yeah, that's my next panel. I think topic for kimono is how to start your own your own tansu. Yeah, it's a lot. It, I think it's really daunting. I, I definitely feel like it's inaccessible at first. Um, it's a little. It feels like a lot. It does feel like a lot. Um, these sets here, super important and super useful for getting started. Um, that's, this is a great starting place is owning one of these sets. Um, it comes in handy for a lot of different things, not just yukata. I would probably get like the more intense one. I need like this guy. What has this got in it? It's got undershirt, which I could live without personally, but it's got the obi ita, which is the, the stiffener. It's got what's called a magic belt, um, which is a elastic rubber version, uh, like Velcro version of um, a Dati Jime, which is a traditional waist tie that smooths things out. I like it better than I like the Dati Jime. It's a lot easier to tie. And it's got these two Koshikimo, which you need to form your Ohashori. It's a pretty good one. And it's also got a corn belt. It's a pretty good set. I could live without the undershirt. I'm wearing just like a sports bra today under here. I could live without that. Um, This is another type of corn belt. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, yeah, these are these sets are really useful. This is it's got a bra slip. Okay, it's got a it's got a how to DVD on how to get dressed. So if you're really stressing, this one's got you covered. Um, but yeah, having a set like this is a really good place to start and just figuring out like what you, what you plan on wearing, you like kimono or yukata too in general, like where are you going to go? Are you going to go to anime cons, which is totally legit. Are you going to wear it out? Like just on the street. And if that's what you plan on doing, that's cool too. I'm a huge supporter of that. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to tackle that topic now. So guys, I hope you had a good time tonight. It's hella late or really early. Um, <laughs> so if you have any last questions, ask now. Um, go to bed so you can get pretty for the tea party tomorrow, which I hope everyone's very excited about. I know I am. Uh, I'm gonna wear 
maybe my gin bay because it's going to be so hot um, here in the Bay Area. But yeah, that's, that's my face, guys. <laughs> I had a great time um, with Sea of Serenity. I hope you did too. And I look forward to our next event too. Why are we still awake? It's a great question. Um, I have to clean all of this up. It's so crazy. And thank you so much for participating. Um, whether you just tuned in for one or two panels or whether you did some shopping, I hope this was a really great event for you. And I will see you if I don't see you at the tea myself because I've got a very small table. I'll see you at the closing ceremonies where we will announce uh, our winners for the raffle. So don't forget to enter the raffle if you haven't already. Uh, and the winners for the coordinate contest. Everyone looked amazing. Can I just say that again? Round of applause to everybody. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about maybe our next event. Maybe a little bit. So please make sure you tune in tomorrow for the closing ceremonies when I will definitely be a part of that. So suspense intensifies. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. I've had a wonderful time tonight, and I hope you guys get some rest before tea. I'll see you tomorrow.